Hey folks, uh, Tornado Twins here, and today is a very exciting day. Uh, we'll get to look at some uh, particle effects, and I'll explain everything about it. And we have come into a pivotal, pivotal point of our game design here, because it's time to actually destroy the turret or cannon or whatever you've implemented. And uh, because otherwise, a core part of our gameplay is missing the part where we get the win. So. We need to do that, but um, to do that, I want to actually make our cannon or turret model explode. And in order to do explosions, we need some uh, some particle effects. And that is uh, how explosions are done in pretty much every 3D game as well as in uh, Unity 3D Engine. Now, to uh, implement uh, particles, you go to the component menu and then particles. And as you can see, these are grayed out because I don't have any objects selected in my scene because particles are attached to game objects in Unity 3D. Now, if I do, however, select something, they become available. But before I do that, I want to show you the effect of what particles can have. Of course, you can have a couple of uh, explosions in your game, and that's pretty easy, easily done. Uh, but particles can really change the look of your scene. So if I open a project of a video game that I'm uh, working on right now, let me see if I have it here, yes. Then uh, it shows you how uh, particles are used to really light up your scene a little bit. Now this game is about a little fish. Um, I'll show you. Here's the fish. He's pretty cool looking. His eyes are bigger than is good for him, you know. So, uh, and as you can see, around him you see all kinds of bubbles popping up in the world. Uh, because I have attached um, some, um, some bubbles to this fish. And this actually makes you feel like there is um, bubbles in the world because it simply follows the character. So when I play the game, you can see some bubbles in the world. But also, the boulders that you see falling down here, they have, um, you know, bubbles attached to them. So this really lights up the scene and makes it alive and uh, makes it actually look like it's real. Now, let me show you how particles exactly work. Here I have the fish still selected. And you can see there's three items attached to my uh, character here that create the particles. First, it's an ellipsoloid particle emitter there is a particle animator and a particle renderer. Now each of these three do something different and it's a little complicated maybe to understand but I'll take you through everything uh, pretty easily. Let me just uh, move outside of my scene here just a little bit so that I don't have anything selected. Let me make an empty game object and uh, you can see the the empty game object is right here. Now if I attach some components to it, I start with one of these, and then I need one of these, and then I could, uh, of course, uh, add one of these. Now the first two are particle emitters, and emitters is what basically emits your particle. It's what starts it, it's what births it, uh, whatever you like to call it. So there's two types of emitter. One is an ellipsoloid particle emitter, and this is basically a sphere, an invisible sphere in the world where you're particles are sparked at random from within that sphere or within that ellipsoloid. So basically, if you don't have a certain shape that you want the particles to come out of, you use an ellipsoloid particle emitter. Now this is used most of the time. Also there's a mesh particle emitter. This, for example, you could attach to a character and add some flames so that really it looks like it's coming from the mesh so that makes it look like your character is on fire. So that's what a mesh particle emitter does. Now, in this case, we don't have a mesh, we have an empty game object, so we uh, attach an ellipsoid particle emitter. All right, so we have that, but we still don't see any particles coming out of here. Even though it's an emitter, it does not show anything yet because we need the other two as well. So go back to component and particles, and there is a particle animator and a particle world collider. Now, the world collider makes sure that particles actually collide with stuff in the world. So, for example, you can have uh, um, fire creep around a certain edge of a bridge or something or you can have uh, um, water hitting the ground but world particle colliders are very heavy in the world okay so very heavy on your hardware so be sure you don't use them too much then we have our particle animator and this is what animates our particles in the world now I'm going to add one of those 
Okay, now we still don't see anything. Okay, that is okay. What we need to do is add another one, and this is our component particles and our particle renderer. And having them rendered in the world is what shows our particles on the screen. Okay, so now we see something is going on, and it's uh, looking pretty bad. But as we zoom out, you can see indeed the particles are sp are spawned from a ellipsoid. So it is sparked in a sort of a sphere type shape. If I uh, hover around it, you can see it's actually in 3D, like that. Okay, our particles look pretty ugly because we don't have a material set yet, but this is what it does. Okay, so um, our particles are just popping up and then kind of slowly deleting itself. Now, first thing that we do is change our material in the renderer. Okay, so whatever we want our particle to look like, we do in the uh, particle renderer. So if you uh, hit this material drop down here, you can select from whatever material you already have in your scene. And I'm using a bubble texture. It is basically just a simple bubble that I drew in Photoshop. And as you can see, it sparks bubbles now. See how easy uh, that is? It just changes the texture. Okay, now of course your material will be visible down here just like any other uh, material on an object and then you can tweak it, you can change the shader, that sort of thing, you can change the color of the particles and this is basically what the bubble looks like in case you wanted to have a peek. Alright, let's go back to our empty game object here. Let me find it, where did I 